Well, a warm welcome to today's debate, Thursday the 3rd of August. And the debate today might be fairly short, in some of your minds anyway. It's, does advertising in the pharmaceutical industry have a beneficial effect or not? Now, I've started thinking about this in the past few days. Uh, now, this is an interesting graphic. I'll put the links to it. And these are the medical journals here. Are they being manipulated by some hand with perhaps an unseen face or is the face semi-seen? That's what we're looking at at the moment. And I want to start off, as I say, looking at adverts. Now, I started thinking about this because of this one. This is uh, Pfizer advertising with comic characters, almost as if they're trying to appeal to young people. And then I came across this one as well. Uh, this is for the Pfizer medicine, for the Pfizer uh, vaccine, rather. Not the Pfizer medicine, the Pfizer vaccine. And again, I don't know, how, how old is this young lady here? I mean, I would say these children are, what, 12, 13, something like that. It's almost as if they're trying to advertise to young people uh, who are at, uh, as far as I remember, fairly limited risk of getting severe COVID. But it's not just about vaccines. Well, this one is, I think. Um, there's so many of these. I mean, I think this is a former politician on the left here as well, uh, using to advertise things. Oh, and this one here, it looks like um, if you get vaccinated, you get a really nice boyfriend or girlfriend or a fiancé, which, which would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, now, some of you might be thinking this is a little bit unethical, of course. I, I couldn't say. You'll have to decide that for yourself, as always, on streets. There's advertising in medical journals as well, of course. Um, there's nothing new. Um, it's been done for a long time. Um, but some adverts in medical journals are aimed at prescribers, and that's particularly one I want to look at today. And of course, there's uh, any amount of these, and I'm not going to bore you with any more of those, I don't think. Um, but let, let's, um, I'll be looking at a few journal articles today, as always, let's look at some of the evidence. So I want to be looking at this here, pharmaceutical company advertising in the Lancet. Then we want to look at medical journals are an extension of the marketing arm of the pharmaceutical companies. And this is in Plus Medicine, which actually it doesn't take advertising. A high quality journal, but doesn't take advertising. And then we'll look at this paper uh, in a little more detail, also from Blues Medicine. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. If you want to hang around for more information, please do so. I will be staying to the end. Now, let's get down to some information from here. Now, this is from this first article that we looked at here from the uh, from the Lancet. Now, the editor of The Lancet, uh, Richard Horton, has said this, famously really said this, journals have devolved into information laundering operations for the pharmaceutical industry. Very uh, unfortunate that this appears to have happened. And that's published in the Dawn of Muck Science, which I assume is a parody of the fast food organisation. Former New England Journal of Medicine, Marcia Angel really fairly similar tones really um, describing information from the pharmaceutical industry she's saying it's got a mixed hyperbole uh, bias and misinformation and it's often uh, there's often no way to tell which is which so which are the good bits and what are the bad bits are sometimes pretty hard to tell and that's from her publication, The Truth About Drug Companies and How They Deceived Us and What to Do About It. Pretty strong language and very unfortunate that this appears to have happened in the, in the opinion of uh, Marcia uh, Angel. Um, medical journals are an extension of the marketing arm of pharmaceutical companies. Dear me. Now... Um, also, Marcia Angel says this, uh, journals primarily a marketing machine and co-opting uh, every institution that might stand in its way. Um, and these are people that are insiders. Some studies found that journal advertising were more strongly associated uh, with prescribing than the scientific articles in the journals themselves, again, from this same paper. So... <laughs> 
there's actually research here showing that the actual advertising could have more influence on what doctors prescribe than the actual research that's in the journal. Incredible, but that's what this uh, finding indicates. Others found that advertising was associated with less rational prescribing. So just imagine you go to your doctor who says, well, John, I think you need a medicine here. Would you like me to prescribe rationally or irrationally? It's just ridiculous, isn't it? So less rational prescribing as a result of advertising and greater prescribing costs. None found association between exposure to journal advertising and improved quality of prescribing. None found reduced costs or reduced prescribing overall. So um, not a good uh, look really at the start of this debate. The findings support the case for reform to reduce negative influences prescribing from pharmaceutical promotions, which I think we would all agree with. So they were looking at information from pharmaceutical companies and, and the outcome measures were the, uh, the quality, the quantity and the, uh, the cost of prescribing or very legitimate things to look at. So the background they give in this article here, pharmaceutical industries claims that promoting uh, promotions provide scientific uh, and educa educational information to physicians. So read our articles because we're going to educate you. We've got your interests at heart. We want to educate you and allow you to give you scientific uh, information according to the industry and their advertisers. Uh, and this study also wants to examine the relationship between exposure to information from pharmaceutical companies to uh, prescribing. So what is this influence? And as we say, the outcome measures quality, quantity and cost. Now, exposures in all sorts of ways, pharmaceutical sales, reps, events, vi visits, journal advertising, attendance of pharma pharmaceutical sponsored meetings, mailed information, prescribing software, participating in sponsored clinical trials, much more on that perhaps in the next video. This is probably a big factor. Um, they did a wide literature search. They found 58 studies, including 87 with a relevant analysis. Found five studies were found where the association between exposure to the pharmaceutical company and information, pharmaceutical company information, lowered quality of prescribing. So five studies showed lower quality of prescribing. Five studies found evidence for associated higher costs. Higher costs of drugs. 38 studies associated between exposure of advertising in uh, to, to medical prescribers and higher frequency of prescribing. So it looks like we get uh, lower quality prescribing, higher costs, and more prescriptions written. Their conclusion. Studies of exposure to information provided uh, directly, to pharmaceutical uh, directly by pharmaceutical companies have found association with higher prescribing frequency, higher costs, and lower quality of prescribing. We did not find evidence of net improvements in prescribing. We recommend that practitioners follow the precautionary principle and thus avoid exposure to information from pharmaceutical companies. Now, to be fair, this article did show uh, some mixed results. Um, the, the, whole, the whole thing is, uh, is uh, there if you want to read it for yourself. Um, it is a systematic review, very logical systematic review. Um, but they were the highlights that came to my man, mind. Now, I'm going to leave the last word on this uh, video to the late Pope John Paul. Uh, he said this, there's overriding financial interests operating in the biomedical and pharmaceutical research fields. These forces prompted decisions and products which are contrary to truly human values and the demands of justice and i think he was thinking about there is uh, medicines which are affordable to people especially in poorer areas he said this the preeminence of the profit motive 
in conducting scientific research ultimately means that science is deprived of its epistemological character, according to which its primary goal is the discovery of truth. The risk is that when research takes a utilitarian turn, its speculative dimensions, which is the inner dynamic of man's intellectual journey, would be diminished or stifled. So this video is primarily about the pernicious effect of advertising that we've seen from the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, I'm not going to do it now, but I, I'm also working on the wider effects of uh, what you might call publication bias or research bias, that only particular things are researched, only particular things are published. They're published in a particular format that often result in increased sales for the pharmaceutical industry. Is this what you would like or would you like um, medicines to be freely available for the benefit of all, regardless of ability to pay and the most efficacious medicines being given, the safest medicines being given, rather than medicines which make profit being given and promoted by advertising? Tricky question, but I'll leave that one with you. Thank you for watching.